I've talked about criminally underrated shows that you've never seen, but today I want to talk about a criminally underrated show you probably have seen. A show that seemingly laid the groundwork for a lot of modern television. It was unique, and it was revolutionary, especially for being released in 2004. But I think the most impressive thing about it is that it still holds up all these years later. It's a shame, however, that all these years later this show is rarely talked about. I'm of course talking about Power Rangers Dino Thunder. In this video, I'm mainly going to be discussing the first season of Lost, because it is one of the best seasons of television I believe you can watch. Each episode is intriguing, utterly captivating, and immensely rewarding. It seems like every episode in season 1 wraps up an important mystery, while introducing new ones and keeping the overall plot moving along at a good pace. Each episode also flushes out the characters in smart and entertaining ways. At the beginning of season 1, I knew absolutely nothing about Jin and Sun, and I really didn't care about them. Towards the end, however, they became some of the best characters on the island. Same goes for Sawyer. At the beginning of season 1, he is a horrible person, but towards the end, he becomes pretty likable. Jack, Kate, Charlie, Walt, Michael, these characters are iconic for a reason, and they're the biggest part of why Lost is so special. Through flashbacks, we learn more and more about each character and how they ended up on the plane, and ultimately, on the island. And normally, I hate flashbacks. They take you out of the action of whatever you're watching or playing, and usually the backstory in the flashbacks doesn't warrant the whiplash that comes from the sudden change of pacing. There are ways to properly handle flashbacks, of course, and when utilized properly, they can enhance a narrative in a powerful way. It's just that most of the time, they kind of feel unnecessary, you know? But in Lost, the flashbacks are not only warranted, but something I actively look forward to during an episode. The way they all weave into the overarching narrative while connecting to each other is so fun to watch and figure out. Some flashbacks and some characters are less important than others, obviously, but there is a never an unnecessary or boring flashback. They all add something of importance to the narrative, whether that be a mystery to solve, a clue to a current mystery, some more character development, or all of the above. Not to mention how emotionally tense some of these flashbacks could be. I'm not going to spoil anything for now, but Sawyer's backstory is so well written and the way it intertwines all of his character beats across the entire season. It helps that the show had some incredible talent behind each role. Considering that a lot of these actors weren't extremely well known at the time, it's incredible how much talent they were able to put behind each role. Jack may be kind of basic, but Matthew Fox was able to pull off the character really well and made him an interesting and compelling character. Everybody was cast perfectly, and I can't imagine these characters being played by anybody else. The only character in Season 1 I never ended up caring for was Boone, but he's, spoilers, killed off before the season finale, so clearly the writers didn't think he was that interesting either. Everything good about Lost, the characters, the atmosphere, the story, the flashbacks, it all culminates in quite possibly my favorite episode of any show, Episode 4. There will be spoilers ahead. Locke's backstory is absolutely heartbreaking. Up to this point in the show, the audience only knows him as a rough and tough hunter who provides the camp with food, shelter, and other necessary survival equipment. He's probably the most integral to their survival along with Jack, so to have such a large tonal shift when you discover what happened to him before the crash is weird, but pulled off really well. Before episode 4, I never really asked myself why Locke went out of his way to continuously hunt and provide for everybody on the island, or why he seemed so happy on a mystery island set out to kill them. In Locke's flashbacks, however, we find out why. Before the plane crashed, Locke was not in a good state. He had a terrible job, he was lonely, and he was in a wheelchair. When he crashed on the island, he regained function of his legs, and he was able to walk again. The reason he hunts, and he hikes, and he solves the mysteries on the island is because he can. And to him, that's the best life he could live. Locke also serves as the island's translator, in a way. He seems to know a lot more about the island than explicitly said to us. The reason everybody in that plane crash ended up on the island was because of some sort of emotional baggage they need to sort out. After Locke regains function of his legs, he seems to figure that out, and is dead set in helping others through their trauma. You come to realize, in big thanks to Locke, that everybody on the island is there for a reason. And that's season one of Lost. There's a lot more I could have gone into, but I am a lazy man, so that's not happening. I love this show, and even though I haven't finished it yet, it seems poised to end up as one of my favorites. Now, if you'll excuse me, I forgot to even begin working on a video for over two weeks, so I should probably get on that. Thanks for watching.